This is a smaller, tight-knit group of individuals that really represent the country. It doesn't matter what age you are, if you're willing to win, you're willing to put your best effort. It's not how hard you get hit. I ended up fracturing my thumb. They suspected that he had Crohn's. It's how hard you get hit and get knocked down and get up again. We don't take days off. That's right, strength, no weakness. This guy's kind of the limit. Get ready, because today we're taking a look at some of our future prodigies and pros. From fast feet on the field to hitting the gym, gear up, because this is no days off. One day, I think that I am going to be better than Lionel Messi. I think it's limitless for him, the way he works and the dedication he has in 10 years. There's no reason why he can't be in the U.S. national team. I think what sets him apart is the fact that he wants it more and he sees that he can actually build something out of it and he's trying to do that. He's a phenomenal athlete and blows everybody else out of the water. He's quicker, he's faster, he's stronger, his footwork's quicker, his shot's better and it's all because of him. You're not even going to need to read the name, it's just going to be C, C for Chase Correa and they're gonna know exactly who it is. What's up, I'm Chase, I'm 10 and I play soccer. Chase is definitely the most consistent kid I'll work with. I think the first time I saw Chase, he was, could have been six. The biggest thing that separates him from other kids is his dedication, his hard work, and his work ethic. Nothing really inspires me. Like when I see other kids going and training, Good. that doesn't inspire me. I just want to train. I just want to do this. I just want to do that. Given the weather here in New England, we get the opportunity. We're out there any chance. Whether it's indoor, outdoor, we talk about soccer non-stop. You got a pitcher or a keeper in there. You got to bury him. Top corners. Good. And hit. And hit. And hit. Good. Great finish. Good. What I try and do with the kids when I coach with them is try and make it as game realistic as possible. Anyone can just throw a ball and hit the shot top corner and say, that was great, but can you do it when I'm running at him, I'm putting him under pressure? No! Nope. Or we're doing it at a tempo, which allows him to not have as much time to think. I know it's not all going to be fun, but I know hit, that hit, it's going to separate me from the kids out there who are not doing it. Quick drink and then we're going to go into you finishing. Quick drink. Get him one. Because I need time. It's not all about you, I need the rest. <laughs> I've never really felt that. I want to stop soccer. I never really felt why am I doing this right now and I could be doing something else. I've always been wanting to train, keep doing it more, which I think is really important. All right, now I'm just going to do a fork drill. Mitch is going to throw some cones at me. I'm going to hit it off the rebounder and shoot. With him being such an attacking player, whatever we do, we want to try and finish with a shot at the end. We're trying to make it as most game realistic as we can. Obviously, we're having him driving, driving at me one-on-one. -on -one. Move it, move it, keep moving, keep moving. Keep moving, keep moving, moving. Go, get away, line it, quick, and hit. I always find a way to get better. I just like soccer, I like the way it's played. I just like everything about it. We saw how Chase trains on the field. Up next, we'll see what it takes to be the best on and off the field. Before the break, we saw Chase's practice on the field. Now we see how he handles speed training in the middle of winter. Growing up in New England, you know, it's always cold. Just something we have to deal with, you know. Especially with Chase, he's going to be competing at a national level. And some of the kids he's going to be playing with are from the southern states where it's a little bit warmer. So if he's going to take days off while they're working, he's not getting any better. So we got to make sure that he's able to compete at that level. It's cold, but it really doesn't bother me. It doesn't slow me down. I keep training, I keep working hard, and that's all that matters to me. Take off, take off, take off. Good. Right the one thing I noticed about him was, you know, his, his work ethic and how bad he really wanted it. As soon as I clap, I want you to push off your back leg, reach with the front one, try to cover some space, and then sink your hips in. I train pretty much every night of the week, whether it's snowing, raining, either I'm inside or outside. I think it kind of shows in my games, my videos. I don't take any days off, no matter what. Good job, nice. There it is, drive. Good, don't look that way, just drive. There we go, all the way down. So most kids his age that I work with, they kind of find reasons to stop. You go one more. You go one more, yeah. I said to Chase, all right, let's, let's call it right there. As soon as I said that, no, let's do more. I want to keep working. With the level that Chase is at, um, I have to find new ways to challenge him. Things like this, adding a resistance band, has been a good way to help with that. Drive, there it is. Push, 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 push. Get there, get there, arms. Second cone, get there, knee drive. 
What I really want to make sure is he's getting faster, he's getting more explosive, he's able to get a little bit stronger. Go. In and out, in and out, shuffle through, in and out, take off. Good, that's the one. Good job. He always wants to work. Even when the session's over after an hour, he's, he's kind of upset usually. He goes straight to hockey, straight to boxing, never stops. I like doing boxing, and as most kids would say, I just like hitting things. Chase is quick to learn, makes it fun, and plus he's just a good kid. You want to be able to be coachable, and a lot of people forget that. And he's very coachable. I tell him something once, and he's on the game. Boxing helps me because it's keeping me on my toes, and it's good conditioning for me, and strength for me, and it's just really good to help me with soccer. A lot of people will say he's gifted, but don't take it away from him. He works very hard. He's going to be fine in whatever he does. These are all pretty much from hockey, soccer. This one right here, this was the one from Mundialito from Spain. I was chosen to play on a national team and play against some of the best academies in the world. Someday I want to play in the World Cup for the U.S and win it for my team. As you can see, my favorite player is Messi. One particular reason why it's not Ronaldo, because he's not cocky like him, like, Colossa! <laughs> Messi motivates me. I think he's a great player. I just love the way he plays. He's technical on the ball. His mental game is great and I dream to someday be better than him. He also understands how real this is for him. You know, he sees that these professional club teams are starting to contact him, and he sees that he can actually build something out of it. You'll never find a kid that loves the game, puts as much time into the game as this kid. I know that I'm already ahead of the other kids that I'm playing with right now, and I think that if I keep working hard, I'm gonna be, if not the best, one of the best players in the world. After a fantastic day with Chase, we head from Boston to Jersey to see how 10-year-old Dylan Premental trains. Before the break, we saw Chase Serrera. Now, let's check out Dylan Premental's soccer skills. My favorite part of scoring, especially when it's the game winner. Go, go, go. Strong points, obviously, is shooting. Head of a left foot, good vision, good composure on the ball. Super high level, a young professional, a model athlete for what other young athletes should be like. As a 10-year-old, Dylan's pretty advanced. That's all the hard work he's put into it. I see these legends, Pelé, Frank Lampard, Pirlo. I want to be just like them. I'm Dylan, I'm 10, and I play soccer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I train six days a week. All right. Make that V quicker though. Good. My name is Mauricio Wilson. They call me Mookie in soccer world. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet Dylan and his father, Pepe, at Onyx Elite Training, which is down in Florida and Tampa in the off season for pro players. Make sure we're breathing. And Dylan was the only child that came to the actual training center. Now the one-twos just start getting a little quicker as we get comfortable. When we came back to New York, we started working on his game this past winter, focusing on his touches, getting him more comfortable on the ball, building up his weak foot as well as his strong foot. Try to get in between the cones and pull it out. Good. We're working on here is building up our leg muscles with our non-kicking foot. Also working on our balance, right? Our core muscles. As we're dribbling, we're usually on one foot. And also working on our foot speed. Not only getting comfortable with the ball, but having quicker foot speed. It's our ladder that we work on that helps us. I train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Good. Before you receive a pass, before you call for the ball, you're checking your shoulder to see what's around you. All right, where the defenders are, where your teammates are, what you want to do with the ball next. Harder, good. What we're working on is that first touch, leading to where we're going to next. And you're the person who's changing the lane. Make sure you're on your toes, you're bouncing on your feet, receiving the ball where you want to go to next. Ah, see how, that's what we're working on, right? So your touch sometimes has to be sore, sometimes has to be hard, depending on where you're receiving the ball. Yeah. Good. Do it again. We're trying to get his right foot better, a little bit more comfortable turning on the ball, receiving the ball with his eyes up, seeing the field. So we have a lot to work on. What we do here is all ball work, all soccer related techniques and tacticals, not just going through the motions or trying to just get, make him tired. The discipline he has, the time he puts into the game, the focus he has on the field is something that many 10 year olds don't have. We can sit here and do all the tricks we want, but once you get the foundation grounded, you can't get it at 16 years old. So we try to make sure that Dylan, who is a very expressive player, who can do many, many, many amazing things on the field, try to make sure his foundation is solely intact, embedded in him, 
and planted. I try to make sure that 10 year olds don't get too big headed and keep on striving. But Dylan's definitely one of the top players coming out of New York City. Good touch. Get it behind it. Ready. Go. I'm Mike Olam, the owner of uh, AP2T, Advanced Physical and Technical Training. Soccer specifics, speed and agility, strength and conditioning. Today we're going to take Dylan on a few different workouts that's going to help his speed, his agility, his balance, his injury prevention, and make him an all-around better athlete. Halfway. Fast. Two. For soccer, what we focus on a lot is changes of direction with ability to stay healthy as well. What I do a lot is focus on balance while fatigued and simultaneously also focusing on that speed and agility aspect. You want the kids to understand that there's a whole level of maintenance that goes into becoming a top level athlete. And I think the biggest factor is he's doing it with a smile on his face the whole time. It's never forced. You don't want it to come from the parent, you want it to come intrinsically from the kid. And uh, that's what I see here. It's no different than somebody that loves an instrument and all they do is go home and play guitar and listen to music. Come on, three more. Spin! Good. To be a young professional, and if you're an aspiring professional, aspiring collegiate player, just aspiring athlete at the highest level, you should enjoy the process of getting there. And I think to engender that in a young person's mind, it's critical. Take that landing on the same foot in your left foot. Oftentimes, if you're not playing on a nice turf field like we're blessed with in soccer, you're playing on a grass field, you have different divots, different holes, and you're just teaching the body that on an uneven surface to stabilize. And it teaches the athlete to really focus on their technique when they're tired, which is important for injury prevention. My name is Mark. I'm the Director of Operations here at Recover. Recover is the world's first recovery studio. So we designed the studio to help people restore their bodies, reboot their minds, and reshape their systems. So with Dylan, we're going through a number of our top modalities. Uh, first is CVAC. CVAC is an altitude chamber. It fluctuates in barometric pressure to increase VO2 max, endurance, and athletic performance. Many famous athletes like LeBron James and Cristiano Ronaldo use it. It's basically putting pressure on every cell in your body and pressure off. So that's helping with uh, metabolic waste removal, lymphatic drainage, at the same time, giving more energy to every cell in your body. I also do the Normatec. It's also known as air compression. It takes out the bad acid in you. So Nucom is a restorative sleep system designed to lower stress levels and improve sleep patterns at night. It delivers up to three hours of restorative sleep in a 30-minute cycle, which is pretty impressive. You're trying to fall asleep, you have two noises. You're trying to pull it together, so it sounds like one. And then lastly, we're going to be doing the infrared sauna. So infrared sauna is a less intense form of heat, but has a lot more health benefits. It's been pretty amazing to see the impact the technology has had on his performance in such a short period of time. I want to play in Europe. For example, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Manchester City, or Liverpool. Doesn't mind coming in and putting in any kind of work, willing to fail to get better, which I think is very important, never gets down on himself. It's a 10 year old, he has a long journey ahead of him. And I think he's ready for the battle and for the ups and downs, but uh, you know, he, he has all the potential in the world. After a day of training and recovery with 10 year old Dylan, let's check in with 14 year old Phoenix Watkins. We've seen both Chase and Dylan play. Now it's time to see how Phoenix Watkins works on his insane footwork. He's very creative. He can kind of do things with the ball that a lot of kids can't. You've got option A, B, or C, where you're expecting them to dribble or shoot and then he'll do an option F. Soccer's like the one thing you could just, you know, get away from everything. Like if you have stress at home or homework or you're worried about a school project, soccer gives you that freedom to just, you know, for those two hours a day to get out and do what you want. My name's Phoenix Watkins. I'm 14 years old and I play soccer. Uh, I started playing soccer when I was about two. He was in his diapers and he was kicking like a little uh, two liter. liter thing of Pepsi around. Super and then, good form. Yeah, and then she showed me, <laughs> she got the pictures developed and she showed me the pictures. I was like, dude, that guy's got good, good form. He had his head down, knee over the ball, he get, had the little lean. Well, Justin played soccer, so it was kind of a natural that Phoenix would play soccer. I played high school soccer. And then after that, I played adult leagues, and Phoenix was always around that. 
So my previous club was LAFC. I played with them for three years, from my 2016 to this past year. And now I play on a Fram 04 team and I'm playing high school varsity. Uh, my name is Ryan McConnell. I'm the head varsity boys coach here at Osceola High School. I met Phoenix about a month ago in tryouts um, for the boys soccer team. And uh, he ended up making my varsity team this year. I wasn't expecting to make varsity as a freshman, but then once I just started training with them, trying out, I just got more and more comfortable. Um, he knows that he's going to benefit from this experience as well. Anytime you play as a 14-year-old against 16, 17, and 18-year-olds, you're going to make yourself better. It's harder because a lot of the, you know, obviously they're all bigger than me. A lot of them are pretty much almost grown adults, but it's good for me. Phoenix playing high school soccer and club soccer, actually any other sport is just going to make them more well-rounded athlete, a more well-rounded person. Um, I make up the physical difference just by you have to be smarter with the ball. Like you can't always try to outrace them or outbody them because they're bigger than you. They'll be faster, stronger, physically just better than you. So you have to move the ball quickly and get rid of it. You know, he's not gonna be doing like all kinds of scissors and roulettes and stuff. You can get some water, bring it over here. But he will do the important thing where he'll pass the ball to your front foot. I knew right away that his technical level was, was very, very high. His feet were really good. Um, he could move the ball, he was smart. His soccer IQ was really, really high. My game isn't really like the flashy type. It's more just get the ball, get rid of it, and move around and just provide an option for my teammates. That's how he surprises people. He might not surprise you every minute of every game, but you watch enough games and you feel like, there's something there. He's got quick feet. He's got the quickest feet I've seen in a long time in a, on a kid. And his speed is good too. He's, you know, he's, got, he's got good acceleration. He's very good laterally. He can get side to side. Um, and he's got a really, really, really good three first. His first three steps are very fast. And that allows him to get by people. Uh, he's one of those kids that's very smart, so he knows when to hang on to the ball, when to get rid of the ball. And he plays simple. That's probably the biggest thing I saw him do was the fact he didn't try to dribble too much. Um, he plays one and two touch. He makes the game very simple. I, I think it's the IQ with him. Everybody can learn to be athletic. Work hard, get faster, lift weights, get stronger. But mentally, that's tough to teach. It's constantly about the little things, right? It's not holding on to the ball too long. Not make, you know, we don't need to take six touches, we need to take two. And a lot of you guys are starting to, to figure out the system that we're gonna try to play, okay? And like I said, it takes time. It's not gonna be done in a week or two. All right, let's go bring it in. Good work today, good session. Just keep working hard. Brace on me, brace on three, one, two, three. Brace! Uh, I wanted to play high school soccer because I think it's different from, you know, club or academy. I just love the brotherhood of it. Like, you just have a lot of friends and stuff, and you meet people that you wouldn't otherwise meet. My parents are very important to me because they, they do everything for me. They take me to practice, everything, and it's, you know, four, five times a week. He's a 3.5 to a 3.8. He has two Bs in the rest of A's. School is a big thing for me because if I don't do good in school, there is no soccer. My coach at my varsity high school really appreciates that because he also wants us to go to college and if we can't get in through soccer, you have to get in somehow. If you not do good in school, there's no soccer. So his grades are there because, yeah. yeah I can't do his homework. Well, usually, I'm usually behind on homework, so I get that done first because usually I'll come home from practice, go straight to sleep. But if I ever am caught up, I play video games like FIFA, Call of Duty, all the normal stuff, Fortnite, like everyone else. He, he's, the sky's the limit for him. I think, I think he can play college soccer division one level and, and you know, possibly play pro. I mean, you know, people don't understand how difficult it is. It's, it's not easy. I mean, less than 1% of high school kids get a scholarship out of high school to play any kind of sport. With Phoenix, I'm most proud too that he is a lot braver than I am. Especially, you notice it through the whole soccer thing. He's gone into tryouts without any hesitation where I would be terrified and he will just go at it and, you know, do what he does. I've been doing this a long time. I can tell whether kids are going to go somewhere with this and he's going to go somewhere with this, for sure. Uh, in soccer, really, my main goal is just to make it professional, rather that's here in America or somewhere abroad. I would like him to, you know, help him with college and get an education and go past that. As long as he is happy, I mean, if he can play this as, f as far as it will take him, then 
you know, we'll be there 100%. It's hard to find good kids nowadays, and he's a good one, so I'm going to hang on to him for a while. From fancy footwork and on-point accuracy to extreme dedication, we saw three incredible athletes today. This was just one day of training for these future legends. They'll be back on the field tomorrow, because when you want to be the best, there are no days off.